Hey guys, it's Charles Jager with Premium Beat, and in this video, we're gonna explore the new Lens Distortion After Effects plugin from Red Giant. But we're also gonna look at some ways you can correct lens distortion in After Effects with no third-party plugins. All right guys, let's start by looking at the lens corrections we can do in After Effects with the built-in effects and we'll later compare them to Red Giant's plugin, but it's good for us to break down the process of what's going on. So what I've got is some really wide angle footage right here in this house, and you can see it's moving through. And you can see this was actually shot with a fisheye lens, so it's gonna give me a lot of distortion, but it's gonna enable me to see a really wide angle view. But we can see lines in the footage, like on this doorway here, maybe on the ceiling, that are really meant to be straight lines, but they're distorted because of how wide angle the lens is. And depending on the project you're working on, you may or may not want that distortion on your footage. And with like architecture and things like houses like this, it can make them look a little unappealing. And this distortion will also make it more difficult for us to actually track the footage as well. So let's go ahead and look at how we can correct that with the built-in effects here. So I'm gonna select my footage. We're gonna come up here to effect. And under distortion, we're gonna use the optics compensation effect. This is a simple effect in After Effects, but it is quite powerful at correcting things like this distortion. So if I actually increase this field of view here, you're gonna see it's actually gonna bend the footage much in the way that a fisheye lens distorts our footage. But what we wanna do is actually reverse that. So let me bring this down and I'm gonna check on reverse this lens distortion. And you'll see when we increase this field of view, it's actually gonna start straightening out those lines. And so what we're gonna look at here is like this doorway and this picture frame. And we can even look at the ceiling line here. We wanna get those as straight as possible. Now, because optics compensation is kind of a one-size-fits-all effect here in After Effects, it can be difficult to get all the lines straight, depending on the distortions with your lens or with your sensor of your camera. There's a lot of factors that come into play, and it can give you various results. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with Red Giant's plugin. But you can see with this footage, I think somewhere around 88, gives me fairly straight lines here on the doorway and the picture frame and the ceiling. And you can, it's kind of a little bit tilted just because of the way this footage is actually moving through the scene. But once we've applied that correction, we can see the footage now looks more like we would expect it to. Now, the cost of this though, is that obviously we're clipping out some of the footage. If I go ahead and turn this off, you can see we're clipping off a lot of footage on the sides. That's having to kind of be pulled and stretched in order to make our footage look straight and correct here. Now, if you wanna see the other footage that's been stretched out, you can. There's a couple ways you can check on this optimize pixels and you can see it's gonna show us more of our field of view here so we get a wider view, but again, we have this kind of black bars at the top and bottom. You can see those are actually transparent. That's just because of how the footage is having to be stretched out in order for those lines to appear straight. And we also have this option here, if we uncheck that for resize, so you can select something like max two times or four times, and this will resize your footage. You can see if I move this, we can see over on the sides more, but again, we still get areas, it's not uniform because of how it's stretching out the footage go ahead and undo that. But those are a few options you have if you do want to see kind of beyond the scope of what you're seeing right here in your composition. I'm just going to set this back to off. So that's a quick and easy way to correct distortion on your footage just using the optics compensation effect. But what's also cool is we can even track our footage in this field of view like this with those corrections. And again, because it's corrected, we're going to get a better track. Before we do that, we need to pre-compose this footage with the effect. So just select your footage, go to layer, and then pre-compose. And we'll just call this our flat footage. Move all attributes into a new composition and click OK. And now with our footage selected, you can go over to the tracker panel. If you don't see that, it's under window and then tracker. And I am just going to select track camera. This is gonna go ahead and analyze our footage and I'll just speed this up to when this completes. All right, so now we can see the camera tracker has completed and I can go ahead and scroll through here and we can see those points are sticking to different points in our scene. Again, this is gonna give us a much better track because we removed that distortion. I'm just gonna come over here to this picture right here. I'm gonna right click. Let's go ahead and create a solid and a camera. And on this solid, I'm just gonna come over here and I'm going to adjust the rotation. I'm gonna zero all this out. And on the scale, I'm gonna scale this down. I'm just gonna kind of stick this to that picture frame there. It's gonna have to be exact, but just so we can kind of see what's happening. All right, so that's sticking pretty good. We'll go ahead and scroll through here and we can see how that's tracking to the picture. Let's add some text above this doorway here just so we can see that as well. So I'm gonna select the text tool. Let's type right here. I'm gonna select that text. I'm gonna make it 3D. 
And for the position of the text, I'm gonna find the position of this track solid. So I'll just hit P on that. And I'm gonna select the position, I'm gonna hit Control C. And then on the fisheye lens position, I'm just gonna hit Control V to paste that. Just so it's kind of lining up. So I know this picture right here is kind of at the same depth as the top of this doorway. That'll be Command C and Command V on a Mac. If you are using a Mac, let's go ahead and just move this above the doorway. So now if I scroll through, we're gonna see both of those are sticking into the scene there and they are tracked to it. So that's looking good and of course we've fixed the distortion, we've actually been able to track the footage better and we've placed objects into the scene. Now where Red Giant's plugin lens distortion kind of separates itself from doing this method is, lens distortion from Red Giant can actually apply our original fisheye distortion back onto these elements and they'll track correctly. So let's see what happens if we try and apply the distortion back in After Effects. It's not nearly as intuitive as it would be using Red Giant's plugin. We'll attempt it here. I'm gonna drag back in my original fisheye footage. I'll place it below everything here. And all these elements that we've used to adjust with the optics compensation and the 3D camera, let's go ahead and pre-compose all those together. So I'm gonna select all of those Go to layer and then pre-compose. We'll just name these our elements. And move all attributes into a new composition and click OK. So now if I go ahead and toggle those off in visibility, we can see we have our original distorted footage. So in theory, what we should be able to do is apply the optics compensation effect to this footage and just reverse it from what we did before and it should line up correctly. So with that composition selected, we'll go to effect and under distort, we're gonna find optics compensation again, and we're gonna go ahead and set the field of view here. Originally we did 88 with it reverse, so let's do 88 without it reverse, and now we can actually see that our elements are being distorted and they line up correctly on our footage, so this is all good and well. However, the problem comes in when we're actually moving through the scene. So if I go ahead and scroll through here, we're gonna see the elements are getting clipped here for some reason, and it's not immediately apparent what's happening. So, if we actually turn off our back footage, we can see here's that new composition we applied the optics compensation effect to, and you'll see what it actually is doing. It's not really connected to the actual 3D camera because this is kind of a flat effect. So the distortion we're seeing is correct. However, it's clipping off the edges here because it's actually bending our footage, as you can see here. So if I set this back on 88, so you can see everything is getting cut off there on the edges. And there are ways you can work around this. It's much more complex and also depends on kind of a case by case basis. So reapplying the distortion back on to track footage here in After Effects with the built-in tools is quite a bit more difficult than just correcting or tracking the corrected footage. Now with that, let's go ahead and look at Red Giant's plugin lens distortion to see how we can make those corrections and how it kind of differs. So I've got my footage selected, come up here to effect and under Red Giant VFX suite here, we're gonna see we have lens distortion. And right off the bat, we're met with the pen tool here. And so the idea here is we want to draw over lines in our footage that in the real world would be straight lines, but because of our lens distortion, they're actually curved. Go ahead and we'll start on the top of this ceiling. So you can see this line goes across here. Obviously it's meant to be a straight line. So I'm just gonna click. It's just like kind of creating a mask and I'm just dragging through here. And you're gonna see, we get this pop-up here, it says consider switching lens type to fisheye. And that's just Red Giant's plugin, already recognizing that we're probably dealing with a fisheye lens, and that is correct in our case here. So I'm gonna switch the lens type to be fisheye. And then I'm just gonna double click here to end that line. And so what we can do is just do a few of these lines in our scene. The more we do, kind of the more the plugin is gonna recognize what the optics of our lens that we're dealing with are. So I'll just come down here and do another line here on this edge. And we'll do one more on the doorway here. And so now we can undistort our footage. We have two different ways we can do this. We can remove the distortion like we did before with optics compensation, or we can create an undistortion pre-comp, and that's good for adding in VFX or maybe if you're 3D tracking your footage. So let's first just remove the distortion. So now you can see when I click that, the distortion has been removed and we're met with straight lines on everything. We have a little bit wider field of view than we did with the optics compensation effect, so that's one of the benefits here. We do have a little bit of kind of distortion of the footage creeping in there at the top and the bottom, you can see. If we go ahead and turn on the alpha channel, you can see that's just where it's clear. If we needed to fix that, we could easily just scale up the footage a little bit to clip that off, that we were not seeing that at the top and bottom. I'm gonna undo that for the time being. But this is giving us a more accurate removal of that distortion, just from the fact being that we can see a wider field of view right here than we could with optics compensation. So it's kind of more of an individual customize dealing with each individual lens type you're working with.
Now let's go ahead and create an undistortion pre-comp and kind of look at that as well. So I'm gonna click this, and what we've got here, down here in our composition, we have our original footage we can see here, and we have this other undistorted pre-comp. And I'll actually turn that on and off. We won't notice any difference at all. And that's because the magic kind of lies inside of this composition. So let's double click in here. And inside of this, we can see, we get this really stretched out view of our footage. And really what this is doing is it's stretching our footage to the max. We can see everything, but you can see everything's remaining in these straight lines. So it is kind of a trippy view of your footage. But again, we're getting all the distortion removed from it. And what this is gonna enable us to do is get a really good track on our footage so we can track our footage from this current state. And it's kind of funny, the 3D tracker will still work even with these massive gaps and alpha channel right here on our footage. It'll still be able to recognize that so that won't affect the tracker at all. But once we have this tracked, we can add elements into it and then we can re-distort those back to match our fisheye footage. So that's kind of the easy magic that works with this plugin. So I'm gonna select the footage here and we'll also notice the footage is a guide layer. So that's why if we jump back out here to our main comp, we don't see it showing up here on top of our original footage. None of your footage is actually being affected, so it's not being distorted and then re-distorted back so you don't lose any pixel quality. So that is nice. So let's jump back into this composition here for the undistorted view. And with our footage selected, I'm going to select the camera tracker here. So we're going to track this footage. And I'll pick this up when this completes. All right, guys, the tracker has completed. We have points on our footage. You can see if I scroll through here how they're sticking to everything in the scene. This is a little bit laggy because this composition size is really large. I think it's like 8K because of how much it's stretching out the footage. But let's go ahead and on this picture right here again, let's go ahead and right click and let's create a solid and a camera. So we now have that solid floating in place like we did before and I'm just gonna zero out the rotation on that and kind of align that with that picture frame. So now we can see that sticking to the picture there. If I just jump forward in time, we'll see it's still in the same position. Let me go ahead and add in some 3D text above the door frame, the same way we did before. Just make that 3D, and then for position, I'll just copy the position of the solid we created. Paste that. And you can see it scaled it down quite a bit, so it's quite a bit smaller, so I'm just gonna bring the scale that up a lot, again, so we can just see it clearly. And let me move this over into position. All right, so now we have the text above the doorway and the solid. So let's jump back over to our main composition and see what lens distortion is actually doing. So now we can see the text is actually being distorted correctly for our original footage and so is the solid on the picture frame. And if we scroll through this, they're gonna track correctly on top of our footage as well. And that's the big benefit we get with lens distortion. It's just kind of the ease of use with that. And again, it syncs up everything so that it does work unlike the optics compensation effect when we're redistorting that back onto our footage. You can see in this other example here with the lens distortion effect where I've added in kind of that chromatic force field and the distortion is being applied to the track so it kind of matches up with the scene. When it comes to just correcting lens distortion, I highly recommend both effects, the native optics compensation effect and the lens distortion effect from Red Giant. Whichever one of those you have available should work just fine. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial looking at different ways we can correct lens distortion and after effects. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one.